السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أنا علي الغزالي ومرحبا بكم في اللسان Here we are with another lesson commenting on العربية بين يديك We're still in chapter number two In the previous video we covered the first two dialogues of the chapter and today inshallah we cover the third one and finish chapter number two So open your books on page number 32, which happens to be the 55th page in the PDF. As you can see here, Al Usra is the title of the chapter family. We're still talking about family. And this is the third Hiwar, Al Hiwar al the third dialogue between Al Um and Al Ab. In the previous video, we covered the words Um and Ab, and we said that the word Um is another word for walida and both of them mean mother and the word ab is another word for walid and both of them mean father so let me read the dialogue for you listen and repeat after me hadha adhan al fajri allahu akbar allahu akbar ayna al awlad sa'd fi al hammam yatawadda'u وأين سعيد؟ سعيد في سعيد في الغرفة يقرأ القرآن. وأين سعيدة؟ سعيدة في المصلى تصلي. أين المعطف؟ هذا هو المعطف يا والدي. وأين النظارة؟ هذه هي النظارة يا والدي. هيا بنا إلى المسجد. Now let's figure out what they're talking about. The mother started the dialogue saying Hada Adanu Al Fajr. This is the Adhan for the Fajr prayer, of course. Apparently the Adhan was going on at the time. And the father says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Of course, the word Akbar is derived from the word Kabir, which means big or great so Allah is the greatest Allah is the greatest he's basically repeating after the Mu'adhin after the Adhan because it's uh, it's highly recommended to do so Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar and then he asks Ayna al-awlad the word Ayna we covered it it means where and then the word awlad here is a plural word a plural word and the singular of this word is the word walad. Now the word walad in the Arabic language it means son or child or even boy. So the word awlad here means children. So it's asking where are the children? Ain al awlad. So the um the um al um answers Sa'adun fil Hammami Yetawadda'u Sa'ad is the first of his awlad and he says and he is in the Hammam. And what does Hammam mean? You can probably tell from the photo here. That's right. Al Hammam means the bathroom. And then the preposition fi here means in. So Sa'ad is in the bathroom. And what is he doing in the bathroom? Yatawadda'u. This is the first verb that we cover in this book. Yatawadda'u, of course means to do wudu. I'm sure most of you uh, and all of Muslims are familiar with wudu. Yatawadda'u, he's doing wudu. And then the father says, وَأَيْنَ سَعِيد? And where is Sa'id? The mother answers, سَعِيدٌ فِي الْغُرْفَةِ يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنِ Again, fi means in. And then the word غُرْفَة is another new word. And it means room this is my ghurfa ghurfati as you can see it. and then what is he doing in the ghurfa yaqra'u al-qur'an yaqra'u is another verb that we learn in this book and it basically means to read so he's in the room reading quran yaqra'u al-qur'an and then the father continues to ask wa ayna sa'idatu and by the way, there's no tanween here. This is a mistake. It should be Sa'idatu, not Sa'idatun. 
And then the mother answers, Sa'idatu fil musalla tusalli. She's in the musalla. And the musalla, it comes from the word salah. And basically it means a prayer room. Al musalla is a prayer room, not necessarily a mosque. Because a mosque, is, of course, is called masjid. And it's more uh, a dedicated place that where the five daily prayers are established and there is adhan and there's most of the time there is a fixed imam and so on. This is called a masjid. But just a prayer place is called musalla. It could be in an airport, could be in, in, com in a company, in a school. That is called musalla. Sa'idun fil musalla. Oh, sorry. Sa'idatu fil musalla. Tusalli, and you probably you can probably guess what the verb tusalli means. It means, of course, to pray. So she is in the prayer room praying. And then the father asks, Aina al mi'atafu? Al mi'atafu is not one of the children, of course. Al mi'atafu basically means coat. So he's asking about his coat. Aina al mi'atafu? Where's my coat? Saad answers, Hada. هو المعطف هيز ذا 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 كوت او فاذا يا والدي اوف كورس ذا ورد يا هي از يوزد بيفور كولينج ابون سم ون اي كان سي يا احمد يا زيد يا فاطمه يا ابي يا امي يا الله اند اتس نوت اتس نوت ا كونديشن يو دونت هاف تو يوز ات يو كان اكشلي سكيب ات You can just say Ahmad or Zaid or Fatima, but it's very commonly used. It's very commonly used. Ya walidi, oh my father. And then the father asks, Wa aina nadharatu? What does nadhara mean? This is a nadhara. Nadhara means glasses. Where's the glasses? Aina nadharatu? Saeed answers, Hadihi hi an nadharatu. This is the nadhara, or here's the nadhara. And notice that when he asked about the mi'ta, the coat, he used the word hadha, which is used to refer to male or masculine words. And when he asked about the nadhara, the glasses, he used the word hadhihi, because an nadhara is feminine, is, is female. Of course, the nadhara itself doesn't have any feminine qualities or anything, or it's not like only girls wear nadhara. But it's just the word itself is feminine. Okay, whoever made up the Arabic language, they decided to make the, the word nadhara feminine. هذه هي النظارة يا والدي أو my father. And then the father, الأب, says هيا بنا إلى المسجد. Let's go to the mosque. هيا بنا is an expression which means let's do something, let's go. And then, of course, the, the, the word ila means to. Let's go to the masjid, the mosque. And then they say, hayya bina, let's go. Now, let's do a quick recap of what we learnt in this dialogue. We said the word kabir means big. And the opposite of that would be the word saghir. Kabir, saghir. Kabir, saghir. And then we also learn the word walad, which means child or boy. And the, the jama or the plural for that is the word awlad. And then, of course, the word bint means daughter or girl. So walad is a boy, bint is a girl. Awlad means boys or children. And the word banat means daughters or girls. And then we learnt three verbs in this dialogue. The verb يَقْرَأُ which means to read. The verb يَتَوَضَّأُ which means to do wudu, And the verb يُصَلِّي which means to, to do salah or to pray. And then we also learnt about three places. We learnt the word حَمَّام or الحمام which means bathroom or toilet. The word غرفة means room. And then the word المصلى which means the prayer room and also learn the words nadhara and the word mi'taf now what you see on the screen now is a page i added to the pdf you won't find it in your books which is a quick summary of the family members that we covered 
in this uh, chapter. Of course, we have the word Ab and Walid, both of them refer to the father. The word Um and Walid, both of them refer to the word to, to the mother. And of course, Jad and Jadda means grandfather, grandmother. And then we have the children. We said Ibn means son, Bint or Ibna mean daughter. And we also learned, of course, Akh and Ukht, brother and sister. Now, for uncles and aunties, we said the father side, we use the words Am, means uncle, Amma is auntie. And for the mother side, we use Khal is uncle and Khala is auntie. Now, just a few moments ago, we covered the words Sagir and Kabir. And we said the word Kabir is big and the word Sagir is small. But these two adjectives aren't only used to talk about size, they're also used to talk about age. So if I want to say the old son, we say Ibn Kabir, an old son, Ibn Kabir, or Akh Kabir, an old brother. And if I want to say a young son or a young daughter, I say Bint Sagira or Ukht Sagira, a young sister. A young uncle, I would say Ammun Sagir, and an old auntie, I would say Ammatun Kabira. And so on. Now, a very important thing that we need to talk about in this uh, lesson is plurals and singulars, or as we call them in Arabic, al jamu the plural, and al-mufradu, the singular. Now, as you can see, this page, you won't find it in your PDF. I made a little table for you that has most of the nouns that we covered in the book so far in mufrad and jam in singular and Plural, but here's the bad news in the Arabic language, plurals aren't that simple compared to English. Of course, in English, you just add an S to the end of the word. Now, in Arabic, we have so many different patterns, and most of the patterns are not exactly predictable. So, basically, you'll have to learn the singular and then learn the plural of that singular. You just have to memorize it, right? And then, after you memorize hundreds of, of different plurals, you will start to notice some pattern and you'll be able to have some sense of distinction and you'll be able to guess the plurals of some uh, nouns. But for now, you're just required to memorize as many plurals as possible. Now, as you can see here, I wrote the, the singulars, the mufrad in blue and then the jama, the plurals in Red. Let me read them to you to give you an idea how they work. So, ism, asma, akh, ikhwa, ukht, akhawat, ab, aba, um, ummahat, ibn, abna, bint, banat, walad, awlad, jad, ajdad, am, a'mam, khal, أخوال طبيب أطباء مدرس مدرسون مهندس مهندسون طالب طلاب رسول رسل شجرة شجرات مسجد مساجد غرفة غرف نظارة نظارات معطف and معاطف so as you can see the they're, they're very different, you can't really pick up a pattern there. So uh, if you memorize these plurals, that will actually make things easier for you. So I highly recommend you do that. However, when it comes to feminine words, especially words ending with the feminine ta, most of them, if not all of them, basically turn into plural when you remove that feminine ta and replace it with alif ta. So, Mu'allimah will turn into Mu'allimat, Tabibah will turn into Tabibat, Ammah, Ammat, Khalah, Khalat, Jaddah, Jaddat. So, at least for those feminine words, it's, it's much easier. That's it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed and benefited. And if you have any questions, as usual, please leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And I have been Ali Al Ghazali. I'll see you very soon. Assalamu alaikum.